gone live and there's no Rohini. And I feel under the gun because I've got a coaching client to talk to at 10. <laughs> got 10 minutes to dispense some kind of wis meaningful wisdom. And there's still no Rohini. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start. Okay, go ahead. So, um, so this week, um, what's really been on my mind, as I'm sure the rest of the world, is, uh, is this virus that obviously um, is, is, is probably causing a lot of stress and anxiety. And, um, and I definitely found myself falling into that camp. I think it was on Monday where I was able to notice how my state of mind really went south very quickly. And I think it was because um, I wouldn't say that I, I, I conducted this self-imposed news blackout, but I was wanting to very much limit my quota of news over last weekend because I just didn't really, um, I wanted to hear too much. I wanted, to, I wanted to find some good news stories and I felt like there were so little available to me on that front. So I was kind of ignore, ignoring the media as much as possible. And then I found out on Monday that my cousin um, contracted the virus and he had it pretty badly. Um, and he was in a hospital, he is in a hospital uh, in Hanoi in Vietnam on a ventilator. And so, um, I don't know, at that point, I feel like I should be uh, really taking this very seriously and perhaps, you know, trying to share this, assuming that everybody was not taking it seriously, because I guess I hadn't taken it that seriously or to that extent. So I decided oh, I'll post something on Facebook. And then I posted something on Facebook and found, it my, found myself, you know, getting a whole bunch of comments and, and there was a sort of a dialogue that took place that made me started to really, you know, think about this, this situation in a whole different way. And I started to worry and get concerned. And I think the fear started to sort of build up inside of me. And I found myself, you know, I, I found myself ruminating on this for pretty much the whole of Monday. And then on Monday night, literally just before I was about to turn the lights off to go to sleep, um, I got a text finding out that someone else I knew had it that was going to have some potential implications for us that could be quite problematic. So, you know, I got that information, turned the light out, went to, well, I say I went to sleep. I had probably the worst night's sleep I've had in a long time and slept very little and constantly tossing and turning and worrying and waking up and worrying. And then in the morning, when uh, the alarm finally uh, went off, I woke up and I had um, a slight scratchy throat. So that obviously was a little bit of a concern, um, but I was still, and I was in this sort of, you know, because I had very little sleep, I was still very much in this sort of fitful state of mind, if you like. And I remember, I think at some point mid-morning, going into the kitchen and there's just, just terrible mess. There's just, you know, the kids have left all their washing up. No one seems to have done anything for three days. So I, I took it upon myself to attack this situation. And, uh, and also because I had a scratchy throat, I sort of, I, I piled on a whole bunch of clothing. I put on a fleece sweater. I put on some nylon pants. I had my Uggs on. I was just, you know, I'll keep myself warm. It's very important to keep warm. And I'm like frantically washing up and putting pots and pans away. And then I got into this, I guess because I was in this very low mood, I started to sort of ruminate on the fact that no one ever lifts a finger in the kitchen. Why, why, you know, why don't the kids like put their stuff away? And then from that state of mind, I quickly went, oh, my throat is scratchy. Maybe, maybe I should stop what I'm doing and take my temperature. So I stopped what I was doing, took my temperature, and lo and behold, I have a fever. And uh, at that point, I'm, I'm just kind of beyond the pale in terms of where my mind is going. So uh, at least I had the good sense to think, well, I should probably just go and lie down. I should get into bed. Maybe I should, you know, that's the best thing that I can think to do in this point. And then literally within the next 10 minutes, by virtue of the fact that I got into bed and I'd taken the fleece sweater off, et cetera, I started to cool down, not only cool down physically, but cool down emotionally and mentally and then I had the good sense to realize well look you know maybe the fact that I had a temperature has nothing to do with any kind of virus maybe because I dressed myself up like an Eskimo and I went to frantically go clean the kitchen and I probably just got very hot so in that more settled state I just started to occur to me well why don't I just set my timer and in 30 minutes I'll stay in bed I'll lay here I'll calm down and in 30 minutes, I'll take my temperature. 
So that's exactly what I did. And in 30 minutes, my temperature was completely normal. In fact, it was a below what it normally is. But the, the whole moral to this story is just look how I got myself like um, keyed up into this very um, sped up state of mind, which was really not helping anyone, least of all myself. And, uh, and it makes me think that it's very easy to get caught up in the whole furore of this. And, and really, for me, it was about, you know, the, the worry that initially started with my cousin, then me like getting into the media and getting into the more sensationalist media that's out there. And uh, before I knew it, you know, that was a big blind spot for me in terms of where my mind had gone. And um, not a good place to be, particularly in these troubling times, to, uh, to really, you know, in a sense, where I could be compromising my immune system just by having that level of anxiety. So I guess for me now, it's, it's an important time to sort of be more cognizant of my state of mind and be willing to pamper myself a little bit, be willing to nurture myself a little bit, be willing to take five minutes to... To, to settle down and have a read or have a rest or do something along those lines. This makes me think that that was a perfect definition for hot and bothered. <laughs> totally hot and bothered. <laughs> and, you know, I think also as probably more and more people are in the category that you're in, where now it's not just something that we're hearing about in the news, now we're um, knowing people that are being diagnosed. I, that was quite a shock when you heard your cousin is on a ventilator. I mean, that's a really serious mm -hmm. situation. And I think that just hit home even more deeply because it's someone in your family. But that's going to be happening. I mean, not necessarily that severe, but more and more people we know are going to be impacted by this. And and what you're pointing out is that we can, that can just feed the frenzy of worry and concern inside of ourselves. And of course, we, we love our family members. We don't want them to suffer. Our hearts go out to everybody who's impacted by this and in and, and all different ways that people are impacted. But what you're pointing to, at least what I hear and what you're pointing to, is the value in taking care of ourselves and not letting ourselves um, run wild with our own worries and fears and anxiety. And, and really, we, we get confused and we think that it's through going in that direction that we're somehow going to find control, some kind, somehow going to find ourselves more stability, somehow going to find a way to figure this out so that we're safe. Like if we just look at the news more or find out more about it or get more information or, uh, you know, if we at least get everything that we need in the home, exactly everything, then that's going to make us safe. Like there, there's this misunderstanding that somehow something out there is going to make us feel safe. And ultimately, that never works. Ultimately, there's never going to be anything out there that's going to make us feel safe. And when we look in that direction, we end up needing more and more and more and more and more because it doesn't work. And if we keep going in that direction, we burn ourselves out trying to find safety that way and you know as you're saying do harm to ourselves along the way it's not good for us it's probably not good for those around us so especially during this time as as really we're all being asked to settle down like now in California we're being asked to stay home the whole state it's like there's a real opportunity to use this time to get more settled to look in the direction of where safety actually lies, to feel more connected with the peace that's within, and to allow yourself to dive into that more deeply where always there's gonna be more available there. And it's in the present moment, it's in the now, it's here, it's now, it's available. And whatever you need to do to look in that direction, whether it's turning off the news, whether it's, you know, I don't know what you need to do, but whatever it is, whatever allows you to look there is going to be what's most helpful. And then I also want to note that as this is unfolding, I'm really struck by all of the messages of hope and beauty and resilience and compassion and love that I'm hearing too. And so if those are something that feeds your soul. Like I love reading those. So I'm definitely looking 
to what's uplifting, looking to what's inspiring, looking to what I can do, what can, you know, what's possible to be of service and make a difference during this time. I think there's a real opportunity for us to use this downtime to take care of ourselves, to connect with our loved ones, even if we have to do it virtually, but to, to really focus on what is available here and now with each other. And, and thanks for sharing your hot and bothered story to illustrate how we can run in the other direction. And we're all capable of doing that. I know myself included. So it's just a reminder that uh, it's okay to lie down, take a breath and relax, and then come back to that place of peace and love inside of yourself. And we're sending you lots of love. Yes, lots of love. There's so much to say on this, but I have got to go to work. I know. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. <clears throat> well said. <laughs>